Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an on location attack on show. I'm Rob E. I'm Patrick Harney. Where are we at today, Patrick? We are at the Horror Con. The Motor City Legacy Horror Con yes. in Romulus, Michigan, otherwise known as Detroit. Yes, because yeah. uh, pretty much anywhere within a 10 to 15 mile radius of Detroit is Detroit. So. Oh, of course. Probably even further. Anyway, Probably. this is a really exciting event. We're going to check everything out. There's a lot of cool vendors here. There's some celebrity guests here that we hope to interview. We're going to try. We're going to, I'm going to send Patrick in with his charming locks and his beautiful smile, see if he can convince him. It's because I'm the newest one to the show, and it's his show, really, so he's just making me do the grunt work. That's all. Seniority counts. Yeah. <laughs> Seniority, because he's a lot older than I am. Oh, I A lot older. Also, if you notice, like, we're not sitting on stools, so if you can see, like, just how much taller I am. He is not on his toes. Than, than this is the first. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around, everybody. Yes. This is Attack on Show on location. Right. I'm very excited about this. We have Christine Elise here, who you will know from the current series Chucky. People our age will know 90210. Thank you for taking the time to come chat with happy, us. Happy to be here. What do you think of Detroit so far? Is this uh, your first horror con here in the city? It's my first horror con in the state, actually. Oh. I'm, I'm super familiar with the state, though. My stepfather's from Detroit. Uh, I used to program a film festival in uh, Saugatuck, Michigan, for like oh. 16 years called Waterfront Film Festival. I even bought a house for a little while in Holland. I had a house in Holland. Um, but this is my first con in Michigan. It's great. It's the first show. It's really, really great. Yes. Uh, I imagine with the popularity going on currently, Chucky and that, there's got to be some pretty exciting uh, fans rolling out through these things. Have you met some uh, interesting people here at the event? Always, always. And not, not just interesting people, but people have uh, original fan art that they've made or like really rare collectibles they have on a sign. So these shows are really fun. And I, and I have friends here too that I've worked with in the past or haven't seen in a while, and so it's just like a, it's just really fun. It's like a reunion. Like yeah. A, like yeah. 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 What's What's the oddest thing you've had to sign at one of these? Um, nothing odd really, but rare stuff. You know, nothing really very odd. But a homemade people, people make homemade Chucky's and like a whole doll and like really elaborate um, Chucky's and like this or, or the head that that with the, from Cult. It's uh, the Andy's torturing at the end of in Cult. Uh -huh. uh, that I signed those and. But, yeah, nothing really weird, though. How amazing no is No boobs or anything. <laughs> well, Patrick might come by later. That might... Okay, The day's right. not over yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, how, how does it feel, I guess, I mean, obviously, with Child's Play 2 coming out so long ago and then the, the character still coming to fruition, and I mean, what's that feel like for you as being able to play this character for this, this period of time? It's like a lottery win, you know? It's the second time in th two years I got to do it. Because Beverly Hills 90210 came back in 2019 as BH 90210, and I came back in that as, as well. So I went from playing Emily Valentine at 17 to playing Emily Valentine at, you know, 50. <laughs> and I'm doing the same thing with Kyle. I played her at 17, and I'm playing her at 50. <laughs> so and in both cases, the character remained a badass. So Yeah, and that's awesome. Well, you are a badass, I feel Thanks. like. So does, 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 does that come, like, is that fun to, to kind of portray that, uh, the badass and yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Bad guys and bad asses are the best things to play. So I have to ask, do you think Brandon, I've always kind of had an issue with Brandon's reaction to Emily back in the day. Like, oh, I know. kind of a prude, do you think? I, I yeah, kind of I gave him the then. best night of his life and he broke up with me. It's some bullshit. That's fantastic. That's some bullshit. I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone <laughs> no, in this. No. And from the source, this no. is fantastic. <laughs> well, I won't take up too much of your time. I want to no. thank you for stopping by. Not at all. Kind of show and saying Good hi. Here. Before you Before you go, this is, uh, we're, we're handing out. You get an official attack on show. Oh, look at that. They, I'll they put look that right fantastic on, on the, uh, yeah, the I'll put it right, are, yeah. yeah, put it on there. So thank you so much thank for stopping by. I appreciate it. it. Thank you. <laughs>
got the one and only William Ragsdale from Fright Night, Fright Night 2, the awesome sitcom Herman's Head, and one of my favorite shows, Justified. William, oh, yeah, okay. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. How's Detroit treating you so far? At the it's Park? great. We've, yeah, I mean, the con is going gangbusters and everybody's been very polite and nice and great. Do you do a lot of these uh, throughout the country? Yeah. Like, is this, a, this is my first con, horror con. Oh, so is it really? Yeah. Like, oh. This is all learning experience. I should be so interviewing like, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I do them through, through. This is my first one in Detroit, in the okay. Detroit area. But uh, I do them throughout the country, you know, for um, throughout the year. So, yeah, it's gotcha. great. It's fun. It's always I mean, so such a creative group of people. And so, you know, I mean, you look around at all the, the, the kiosks and the stands and everything it's really amazing to be around yeah you never really quite know what you're gonna run into i feel you like. don't <laughs> and sometimes it can be startling yeah i was so. gonna ask that now have you ever been scared at one of these events by anybody who came to visit you <laughs> daily yeah 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 he's like two minutes ago when you asked me to do this interview yeah, yeah. <laughs> i thought this is the scariest outfit i've ever seen <laughs> it's now, the logo they uh no there's a great there's a, a krampus walking around yeah. here with the, that is terrifying and uh, a couple of freddy kruegers and uh and, oh, and a um, scary clown guy. So, yeah, it's Don't something like for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd like to ask real quick on Justified. That was a fun show, and that was an interesting <laughs> character for you because when you came onto the series, um, did you know originally, I guess, the story arc of the character of Gary when you started that, or was that something you kind of learned throughout uh, as the series progressed? Not really. I, I, you know, I think that they had the setup about who, who, who he was and – what his relationship to to Raylan and uh, and you know everybody else there? But uh, I, I certainly didn't know where they were going to go with it. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I just sort of knew the setup, and and I'm not sure they knew exactly where it was going, and it just sort of evolved. The the first few episodes of the show were very different than what it turned out, right? What, where it went and what it became. So you know, it's they it evolved yes so i don't want to take up too much of your time i just want to thank you for uh stopping by here and yeah. taking them at the chat and i can't let you leave empty-handed we have unique attack on show buttons here oh uh, and thank they look you. great on the lanyards in that so uh, okay i, I, I want won't. to thank you for taking the time this is i've been a huge fan of fright night uh, oh. the movie was definitely like left an impression on me i have, I have three older brothers they <laughs> always subjected me to horror films oh, at a young yeah. age and fright night was one that really oh. Oh. Uh, stuck with me with the vamp the, the long vampire face yeah yeah right yourself yeah. and evil and the vision of seeing what's going across yeah. the, the street or what's happening always left the mark on me well so. you, you you seem uh, very minorly scarred <laughs> from from what it could have happened i guess yeah i thank my brothers for that yeah thanks thanks guys no thank you so much my for, pleasure uh, nice to meet you and talk to you nice to meet thanks, you thanks guys <laughs>
and they go to sleep and they live out their wildest dreams and they're supposed to live out their life like that. But little do they know the drug begins to fail and Martin Landau's character takes his own life. Mm. And now the world was without the drug and half of it's woken up. And the other half of the world doesn't know what to do with that population. So they stick them into quarantine. House arrest under penalty of death. Flash forward now to this particular family that I'm a part of, two years into the lockdown. Where is this going? And that's how our movie begins. Wow. And how we, timely, right? Well, that's the thing. You know, we filmed the movie 10 years ago, and the director, you know, thankfully had overcome his health problems, but he had some health problems that put him back for five or six years. And when we reached out to each other during the pandemic, it was only then that we realized, you know, and I asked him about the film, he's like, no, no, that's been sitting on the shelf. It's finished for years. I'm like, well, we're in quarantine, no? Yeah. <laughs> Our movie's about quarantine, no? We should see about... Let's put it out. Yeah, I mean, you know, we didn't know. We, we didn't know if there would be an adverse reaction. Like, maybe the last thing that's what people wanted to see. Mm. But so far, the reaction has been positive in the sense, I think that people understand more about what the movie may be than they would have before the pandemic. Interesting, interesting. It's crazy how that kind of thing can work out. You know what I mean? Where yeah. you, you people can have a little bit different perspective in watching something that was made 10 years ago just because of their own life events. I think that's cool. Yeah, and, and you never know. You know, you make the movie without the in, knowing what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. And so yeah. It's, 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 it is interesting. It's timely. Donnie Darker went through kind of the reverse in an interesting way. You know, we came out in October 2001, so a month after 9-11. Yeah. But after watching planes crash in the building, the last thing that people wanted to see was a jet engine land on the house. Yeah. They did not want to see yeah. that. So no one saw Donnie Darko when it came out. But <laughs> look at it now. Yeah, well, that's. I think that's a There's testament. There's following now. Yeah, a testament just, you know, and the biggest compliment it wasn't because the studios put millions of dollars behind it, but because the fans just said, I saw this really trippy movie and I think you need to see this. I can't explain it. You just need to watch it. Yeah. And so the fact that it spread from word of mouth is almost to me, a bigger compliment than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Well, that well, that's amazing. Well, hey, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time because I know you're busy here, but thank you so much oh, for being Patrick, here. Oh, Patrick, thanks for really having me. And thank you it. for being here, you guys. And thank you for covering this genre. Of course, do of I course. Get a, do I get a pin? You do. You get a pin, an official Attack on Show pin. That well, is for I'm going to put sir. my Attack on Show pin right next to Rusty. Nice. From European Vacation right over there. Nice. <laughs> Now this is a real treat for me because we have from one of my favorite films, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which I've been a long time fan of this. Suzanne Snyder is here. Suzanne, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Killer Fun. Clowns, what's it like being part of a film that just left such an impression on so many people that, I mean, there's just such a cult following of it. Does it surprise you still today of, of new fans coming to these events to meet you? So, you know, when you do a film, you never know how it's going to turn out if it's even going to end up in the movie theaters, right? <laughs> you just don't know. Right. Um, and so it's it's really been just a very special experience um, because I shot the film with Grant. Grant's like my brother. He's one of my best friends. And um, the fans and the people that you meet and the stories that they tell you, it's it's just been really um, a blessing. Yeah. Dare I say that? Yes. And the Kyoto brothers are awesome, and I become really good friends with two of the clowns, Herod Hank <laughs> and Mike Martinez, and then John Masari, the composer. So it's it's just been kind of a family with who we worked on the film with, and then meeting everyone. It's just, I mean, it's it's just the most amazing experience <laughs> in all honesty. So yeah. has anybody brought cotton candy for you to autograph? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> 
I have autographed cotton candy. Yes. I have autographed popcorn. And um, I love popcorn and cotton candy <laughs> also. So they're like the, the house gets ten percent. I'll sign the rest. I want to. I want some cotton I think candy. You need some. <laughs> <laughs> so was it creepy? As creepy like I'm set with those clowns because that was some pretty scary makeup. Um. So what was cool was the Kyoto brothers showed us everything as as we were about to shoot it okay. so we understood how everything was going to work <laughs> and um they were so passionate about the clowns and they were always designing these amazing it, kind of like works of art really i mean i know they're vampire clowns but they're also like works of art yes and um so it was scary when they were chasing after <laughs> you and everything and in the dark but it was also um very cool and kind of like inspirational and educational in a way. I, I learned so much about special effects. Oh, yes. And puppeteering and, you know, so that was very cool. Yeah, yeah. I got to randomly meet uh, somebody in the special effects department who made the cotton candy cocoons and that was just, it was exciting to meet and chat with them about the design and how it came together. But uh, I've been a fan of that movie for a long time. I, I, it's one that like, you know, I introduced to my daughter of you, you got to watch Killer Comes from Outer Space. Afraid of clowns, but you still gotta sit, you gotta watch it, right? Yeah, well, I think the thing that's cool about Killer Clowns is it's a horror film, right? I mean, it's vampire clowns, <laughs> but you know, the colors are kind of disarming because they're happy colors, yep. they're bright colors, so it makes you feel cheerful. And then, you know, the clowns are using silly straws to drink the blood, so it's kind of like fun yes. and scary and kind kind of disarms you and I think for kids if you watch it with your kid and you laugh instead of screaming yes. they get it so it, it kind of works it's a good introductory horror film oh, yeah. to kids. No it's fantastic you, you can start manipulating their minds very young with this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, before you. you go, we do have a present for you. Uh, we have our very own Attack and Show custom buttons. So oh, I want to give you that for taking a few minutes to come chat much. with us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. It's it nice to meet you. Thank you. that about wraps up our time here at the Motor City Legacy Horror Convention Show. This has been an amazing time. We met some fantastic people. I want to congratulate Tracy No and Adam DeFilippe. You guys put on an amazing event and I cannot wait until next year's. But until then, I need to get out here and find Patrick because I'm already spending the rest of our budget on the show. As always, I'm Rob E and this is Attack on Show.